Hola a todos, es Mushemi y estoy de vuelta. Bienvenido a mi canal YouTube. Uh, no olvides de poner un like, dejar un comentario y partager ese video con vuestros amigos, amigas y familias. No olvides de también de suscribir a mi canal YouTube para que puedas ver mis otros videos. Y ahora miramos el introducción. Hey guys, I'm back. Today we are going to start with the clothes. But before we start with the clothes, let's take a look at the concept art. As you guys could probably already see from the thumbnail, this doll will be inspired by Brazil. So for her clothes, I decide, decided to go with a Carmen Miranda look. So if you're wondering who is she, she is a Brazilian samba singer who is also a dancer, a Broadway actress, and a film star for her, who is known for her look, which is sort of like this. So obviously before we actually start sewing the clothes, we need to start by making the pattern pieces for this look. To make the pattern, I take this monster eye dress and then put it inside out and then after put it on the doll. Then I mark where I want the top and the skirt to end. Then I cut the dress accordingly, following the markings. For this step, it is important that the dress that you choose fits the aesthetic that you're going for. So I chose this dress between the three that you can see on camera now. The next step before seam ripping, that way we can get the pattern pieces that we want is to put the skirt and the top back on the doll and modify their shape if needed. Don't ask me why I'm zooming and de-zooming the face of the doll. I'm weird. These are all the parts that we will need to actually create the pattern pieces. Now we can actually create the pattern pieces so what I do for this part is I just trace the shapes that we created before onto this kind of, um, well, parchment paper or something like that would be better. But this was all I had on hand. But it works fine. There are a few things that are going to change. First, the back of the dress will be one piece instead of two, piece, two pieces joined at the back by a velcro. Whereas the front will be split into two pieces. So what I do is I extend the side as that is not the side seam. That way we can actually tie it on the doll. So I didn't explain this part very well, but you can look on the camera screen to see. Now for the sleeves. As the dress didn't come with any sleeves, we'll have to create that as pattern pieces ourselves. For this pattern piece, I just basically take the other pattern pieces that we created and then I just use the sleeve seam that way the sleeve that way when we sew the sleeve seam it hurts perfectly now for the wrap skirt thing so to start with I just take the back the back piece for that we made for the skirt and then I just copy that pretty much then I measure how long I want the skirt to be and extend the pattern piece that way it fits that and voila. Then after, of course, we cut all the pattern pieces. Now I name each pattern piece and write down how many fabric pieces I need of each pattern piece. It was then that I realized I had made a mistake. I literally sat there contemplating. What should if I had made a mistake for around 30 seconds? So let's just sit together and um. Um. And then when I finally realized, this was my reaction. Oh, wait, no. This one, oops. With that dilemma, 
Here's my dilemma when the third one's young and the other half wants to forget. So yeah, after that dilemma, I continue naming each pattern piece. The main fabric I chose is a gouache loss red fabric. I can pin and cut all the pieces that are going to be red. So off camera, I sewed the shoulder seam and then I hemmed the neckline. Not sure if it, the whole thing's called that, but I don't care. I don't care. I love it. Next, I take these three pieces of fabric, green, yellow, and orange, which will later become the fringe. Next, I cut long strips out of the fabric, two, two strips of fabric for each color, one for each sleeve. And the length depends on how gathered, how poofy you want it to look like at the end. So I tripled the size that I want it to look when it's finally gathered, finally finished. Then we hem the fabric before gathering. You don't have to do this step, it just creates a nice finish. I only though gathered three sides, apart from the one that was on top, since all the, the side that will be sewed to the thing will be hidden by the other fabric pieces. I decided to gather the fringe by hand, but this way just takes a lot of time. So basically what I did is just I pinned it and then sewed on top of that. But another way you could do it by hand is just do a rough stitch and then pull. And I hem the sleeves. Then I sew the gathered fabric on the sleeves in this order, green, yellow, orange, starting from the end of the sleeve. So this is when things start getting tricky. So the problem was that because of the puffs, I couldn't sew the sleeve to the top and then after sew the side seam. So what I did instead was I sewed the side seam on the sleeve and then on the top itself. Then I reversed it the sleeve and then I sewed good side on good side, good side of the sleeve onto the good side of the top. Then I hem the bottom of the top. I sew a dart on the back, that way it lays on the doll properly because they have a very like curvy back. Now a part that I thought would be easy but I ended up making two failed skirts and one the final version. So the one on screen now is the first attempt. First step is sewing the front piece to the back piece. And the bottom and the top. But on the final version, I add a strip of excess fabric. That way the skirt doesn't pop up. And then finally, I sew the back seam and add snaps or velcro. This is how that white strip of fabric works. Now for the other skirt, which I actually forgot to film when I was actually making it. I'm not sure why. So I'm going to create this little mock-up version. So first we start by gathering the strips of colors, which is what I'm doing right now. Now I create a dart on this, uh, this fabric was the fabric that was supposed to be red, just so it fits the doll properly. Then we um, sew the gathered um, fabric, so this fabric would be either green, yellow, or um, green or orange, and then we sew it to the red fabric. Then we take um, each side of the red fabric and put them on top of each other. So the reason I do this is that way we don't see the seams. And then I take this other strip of fabric, which will be a ribbon the, in the real version. And I just sew them like this. And just so you guys know, the way I pinned the ribbon around it was not correct. Then I go ahead and hem that last little area. So in the end, this is what it looks like, and so I actually changed the um, vertical fringe for horizontal fringe, I just thought it would look better, and also it's easier to make. So this is the first doll I planned to use for, for this project, it's a Dracula doll from the Haunted Island. And I decided to dye the doll brown. 
Click the picture and click the video. So obviously, with my luck, I didn't get the right dye. I didn't get a synthetic dye, so it didn't work. To be honest, in retrospect, that was a dumb idea. Thankfully though, although keep in mind this probably was around a month after that disaster, a package of dolls arrived from my aunts. Actually, the aunt that I made a doll of, so just press that I button to see her video. And in this packet, I decided to pick a Claudine Wolf doll. This is a Claudine Wolf doll that I decided to use for this project, but I don't know which line she's from. As usual, we have to prep the doll before customizing it. As some of you guys who watch my videos know, this is a step of the process that I like a lot. I start by cutting the hair. Then I cut off her ears, since I want her to be a human. You guys are probably wondering why, since I didn't cut off Katrine's. Well, at the point in time where I customized Katrine, I just took inspiration for her clothes from St. Lucian traditional clothes. So I wasn't planning on creating, um, doing this series. Another thing I do is remove the remaining hair from the inside of the head using pliers. If you want to see how I do that in more detail, press Consuela's video. I button. As you guys have probably realized, removing the ears has left holes in the head. So to fix that, I glue pieces of fabric over the holes. Next is rerouting. So at the time where I was recording while well, rerouting, um, I hadn't rerouted for a while. So the last time I did it was with Katrine. So that was like 2017, and I recorded this. Why we rooted this doll's hair in like January 2019, so that's quite so little while, you know. To reroute, you just put a few strands of hair over your finger, then take your rerouting tool. Mine is homemade. I cut a needle with a big eye on the side, and then stuck it to a paintbrush. And so with this rerouting tool, I cut the strands on my finger, and then poke them in the pre-existing holes. Beware, this takes quite a long time. I probably took like two, maybe three days to reroute. And to finish, pour some waterproof glue inside the head and whoosh the head, mush the head together. That way all the glue gets every little tiny spot. And then we wrap the hair with this fabric that to protect the hair once we spray it. Spray the head with sealant. I also used an old shower and cap to protect it since the fabric alone wasn't long enough. Now to tackle the feet. For this doll, I want her to be barefoot because when people go to the beach, they normally go barefoot and there were a lot of beaches in Brazil. And I also wanted to flatten her feet that way it doesn't look weird. To accomplish this flat foot, I heated up the ankle area on a candle then I just bend the foot. The trick is to be patient. Let the foot stay over the cam candle for a while but don't let it touch the flame. Obviously I wasn't very patient so they didn't turn out that nice. Now to start on one of the parts that I was super excited about this project. When I was in Brazil many people had tattoos so I wanted to incorporate that into my doll. Sadly, when I filmed this, I didn't film it well, so we can't really see what I'm doing. In retrospect, I should have put the camera where my iPad was. I'm not sure if you guys see that. Anyway, I hope you guys forgive me for this. You guys can't really see this, but for the first layer, I used a color that would be easy to erase, so you can't see it well on camera. Then I spray it with a sealant. I used this Udi sealant, which is like on the right, which worked very well. The only problem would be that it cracks a lot. I went over the sketch with a black pencil, sealed the doll, and then start coloring. Another thing I did was add my initials on her leg. Now we can start coloring the tattoo. For the main tattoo, a bird, I decided to go with a violet-capped wood nymph.
is what the tattoo looks like after we're done coloring it. Next, we can start coloring the wing of the bird. As you saw from the image, the wings are like brown, purplish sort of thing. Kind of pretty, but weird, and but still pretty, you know? This is what the wood nymph looks like in the end. I did this proverb in Portuguese, a união faz a força, which in English translates to many hands make light work, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Then we go on with her other tattoos such as a flower and hearts. When we are done, we can blush the doll to make it feel more real. I blush her knees, her ankles, her joints, and her cleavage. Feathers, feathers, feathers. Feathers and nerves. So basically, I decided to make her earrings out of feathers. First, to make the earrings less monochromatic, I used green and yellow and orange, sorry, pastels to change the colors of some feathers. Then I lay them on top of each other and glue them with hot glue to keep them in place and then glue them onto white fabric and then finally I glue red fabric on top of them to make it like a finished product. Now for the face up. I start by contouring the face with pastels. I contour the cheekbones, the forehead, and the eyes with brown, brown pastels. Then blush the nose with light color and add a reddish color to the lips. So guys, I blushed the doll knowing full well that the Audif sealant was not flexible, but in my head it still made sense. I would use Audify and then spray with another brand of sealant on top. Sadly, when I sprayed with another sealant, the old sealant cracked, so I had to restart, but this time using a Liquitex sealant. Once all that drama is done, I start by drawing the eyes, as usual, 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 usual. I start by outlining the eyes. Time for a short athletics video, but sorry for the poor quality. Then I use that mix that we made to out really define that outline of the eyes since the pencils were not dark enough. Time for the irises. As you can see from the concept art, there are several colors in the eyes, so I decided to create a marble effect. For this, I put some water in the eyes and then dab orange, brown, and yellow watered down paint in the eyes and then mush them that way, place reading, you know, like a nice marble effect. Off camera, I added the sclera, which are the white of the eyes, the pupil, def I defined the eye outline and added some random freckles with paint to give it a little mm, to make it a little fancy. And so now I draw the eyebrows and the eyelashes. So 
Sorry, I'm going off camera here, but I'm just painting the waterline of the eyes pink. Once we are done, this is what she looks like. Just one thing that I didn't mention before was the lips. For them, I layered red and browns, red and brown pastels, and added white for the teeth. But for the brown pastels, I just added them layer after layer after layer. That way, they got like a new, super deep, pretty red color. Now, I add the highlights under the eyebrows and on the cupid's bow of the lips. Now, for my favorite part. And in the eyeshines, this just brings the whole face together. I love it so much. And bada boom, bada boom, she's done. Now we can unwrap the fabric protecting the doll. And as soon as I unwrapped it, I was like, oh my gosh, the head's huge! <laughs> Keep in mind she had been like this for probably around two months or even more. Then we can go ahead and unwrap her hair. It was then that I realized how gorgeous the hair was and how well it went with the doll. And you guys don't know how this feels. I had been working for this doll for so long. So when just like <clears throat> it really made my day. All we have to do is dress up the doll and then we are done. It's sad, but this video is coming to an end. I had an amazing time doing this project. I, I just had so much fun creating this doll creating the concept and then after creating the doll I'm just so sorry it took so long but um, hopefully next time it won't take that long so what I just showed were her nails that I painted um, red and then also this piece of fabric that I'm going to use to tie her hair which is um, based on roads that that you can see in Rio in Brazil so yeah, I had a super fun time doing it. Hopefully next time I do a customization. It doesn't take so long. Although by the time that I'm recording this sound for the video, I have already started another doll project. Not sure when it's going to be. I'm going to upload it, but maybe hopefully by summer at least. And so um, just before I go, I we have to choose a name for her. So unlike last time where I let you guys choose the names, this time I picked four names and you guys can vote for which name you prefer in that I button there. So just press it and then click on the name that you prefer. So the first name is Andresa, which, in, um, which means who who is a strong and courageous woman, Diane, who is one who is beautiful and smart, Eloa, which is a goddess, Fernanda, who is an adventurous traveler. I personally love all of these, but it's up to you guys to choose which one you think fits best with this doll. Please, please, please do vote and also, don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe to the channel if you like this video and want to see more of what I do, and also share with your friends and family. Yeah. Bye guys. Thank you for watching this video and see you guys next time. Let's take a look at the final photos. Most of these were taken by my sister. Hello.